Christophoros. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. How uh, are you? Very well. Uh, enjoying the summer and um, trying to launch this new project that you can see <laughs> and that you are one of my first. Actually, you are my first guest. First because guest, sorry. First guest, because the first episode, this is episode 1A, okay. Okay, not, not 2. I'm using legal uh, terminologies. The first one was a sort of a webinar. Mm -hmm. I, an I announced the second one, which is taking place next week on Tuesday, 6 o'clock on LinkedIn tips. It's going mm -hmm. to be really uh, useful. Uh, live as well and this one because i announced it after number two but it was it predated that one i so called it one a <laughs> you know, the usual legal tricks okay, okay let us say welcome to everyone to our viewers to the live viewers thank uh, you for the invitation and i am very honored to be the first guest likewise thank you for accepting it uh, let me just say that christophoros is the founder and f managing partner of christovian associates he is an active and uh, passionate lawyer since 1996. Uh, Christophoros specializes in company and commercial law, employment law, industrial relationship, but, uh, relations, but also he has an active interest in European law, media law, uh, information technology, which is relevant to our topic, and intellectual property law. In addition to being an active litigator, he also regularly lectures on company law. Uh, to professionals, lawyers, accountants, insurance agents, and service providers. And you can follow Christophoros on LinkedIn, Facebook, and we can say more about his online activity, which is really remarkable. And uh, it is the, actually the reason as to why he's my guest in a tango of invitations, if I may <laughs> say so, using dance uh, terminology, because our, we were we met each other last year in the in the Cyprus legal conference organized by IMH, if you remember, we knew yes. of each other. Yes, yes, yes. But we and met I there. You, uh, from LinkedIn. Exactly. Yes, so, and from the law firm that you used to work, because I, I was working there in uh, at Andreas Neucleus mm -hmm. LLC many, many years ago. Exactly. So we met there uh, and we subsequently uh, continued our connection online. Mm -hmm. I, uh, one day I wrote to you and I told you, because I saw you are online activity, publishing videos, mm -hmm. you, de you dared. You are the only lawyer I know, other than me, mm -hmm. uh, I'm in a different chapter, uh, that you dare to put your face on, on a screen and publish videos. Mm -hmm. Am I uh, correct? Yes. Well, for me, it was uh, it was something I would say natural in the sense that I always had an inclination for uh, reporting for um, uh, for the print media, newspapers, uh, the radio. Uh, when I was a student at the university, I was the editor and publisher of a Greek newspaper that was circulated to the. Uh, fellow students at Leicester University and in the summer I used to work for a radio station in Nicosia, uh, Radio Epistrophe. It was the first private radio station in Cyprus. <laughs> As you know, uh, um, in the 90s we, we only had uh, RIC, the, the, the Cyprus Public uh, Broadcasting Corporation and there was no law allowing private uh, radio stations or TV stations and there was really a fight then a lot of demonstrations and a lot of pressure to the government to put uh, in a new legislation that would allow this and Radio Epistrophy was on one of the first pirate radios. It still exists uh, and uh, plays over the internet. Um, and at the time, in 1995, 1996, it was very popular, at least in Nicosia. And I used to do a morning show there during the summer uh, when I was uh, in Cyprus. And uh, uh, the radio always thrilled me. I, I, I like very much the idea 
talking to people, mm-hmm. uh, informing, communicating, and all these things. So uh, it was uh, an idea that I had for many years now to to create legal matters and find a way to communicate uh, with the public and fellow lawyers and discuss legal issues because as lawyers, uh, we are concerned with uh, things relating to our profession, uh, the courts, the law, uh, the, the conditions of work, uh, uh, Cyprus and so forth. So I had this idea uh, in 2018 and um, I started doing some amateur uh, videos uh, initially. Um, five minutes, six minutes, ten minute videos. They are still on YouTube if you uh, you, you can look them up on the, on the channel. And uh, Gradually, I got into the idea of, instead of just talking uh, to a camera or to the iPhone, why not interview people and invite other uh, lawyers uh, as guests, not only lawyers, but primarily lawyers, and discuss uh, and get their experience, their perspective, or like create a discussion and... um, this uh, idea started uh, last October, uh, and my first guest was uh, Christos Kliridis, uh, and uh, he's the lawyer that uh, I did my QBLH in 1996, so we also had uh, this connection. Uh, so uh, he came in and we did an interview, 90 minutes, and it was like a biographical Uh, interview Mm -hmm. uh, because the idea there um, was to create segments in legal matters and uh, have each segment dedicated to something uh, to to a specific area like I have legal matters stories and the idea is to get interviews from lawyers old lawyers or you know people that are towards the uh, end of their career so that they can tell their story, their experiences, how was it to practice law in the 70s, in the 60s. And the other segment is the Legal Matter Guests, which is Mm -hmm. uh, interviewing and podcasts with lawyers that we we discuss current things that uh, interest uh, our profession. So this was the idea, and it is in this context that we had the interview together, that podcast last December. Uh, If you remember, uh, where we discussed about the legal profession and the coaching and all these interesting things that you have in the book, the Marvel book, and uh, which went really well uh, in views in YouTube. So this is how it started. And uh, the the real boost was during the lockdown when... uh, Everybody <laughs> was uh, <laughs> locked uh, in their houses and uh, in their offices, and uh, I, I had I, I grasped the the opportunity there to invite lawyers nearly on a daily basis. I mean, I I, I think it was every day. I must have done over fifty interviews, fifty podcasts during this uh, period, and we discussed all legal issues that emerged because of the lockdown. Human rights, the measures uh, that were taken, the implications in the legal profession, the economic disaster and all these things. And we had a podcast together as well, yes. if you remember, to yes, correct, correct. about the psychological <laughs> So aspect. on the one hand, you had the, okay, you had a perfect storm mm-hmm. for, the, for, the, for the Legal Matters podcast, the perfect storm in what sense on the one hand people were at home Mm -hmm. people were sent home there was a period where many people were at home now Mm -hmm. many people went back to work so people were at home so they could watch there was a lot of attention on on screens Mm -hmm. so there you had an opportunity to do more uh, events and on Mm -hmm. the other 
hand, the very fact of the crisis gave mm -hmm. you food uh, and content for the podcasts. So it is yes. as if everything converged mm -hmm. so as to make legal matters a, a really pertinent, relevant, and useful uh, mm -hmm. channel. Uh, so as to, and people began noticing your work, but as mm -hmm. you have said, your work has been around for a couple of years at least. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah know, absolutely. The, 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 the stars aligned because mm -hmm. of the COVID situation. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. and since you're mentioning the guests, because lawyers are a, a difficult, let's say, breed, mm -hmm. uh, and I know we had some conversations in the past about the willingness mm -hmm. to appear before a camera. Uh, would you like to elaborate a bit on the on, on challenges? Of course, you don't need to mention names, it goes without saying, but yeah. what, what kind of themes or challenges you've seen in convincing people? You know, you can come and you can tell your story and you can share your uh, opinion with us on this podcast. Look, the initial reaction before it became known, was negative. In other words, I had to insist and try to convince uh, the lawyers to come on as a guest, uh, as a guest in the in the podcast. And uh, because there was no awareness, it was something new. Uh, even though lawyers are public speakers, exactly, they, they talk in court. Uh, <laughs> Uh, every day and they fight with each other. Nevertheless, uh, this kind of exposure, um, another thing that I would like to make, to make a parenthesis, uh, I decided during this period and this idea came to me that I should do the show live. And this makes, it, it, it's a game changer. It's a, a tremendous um, yeah, you change. Can can you explain uh, the difference between the previous model, the pre-recorded and well, this one? Well, yeah, in your case, if you remember, we did yes. the recorded uh, session, then you have to edit it, upload it, and then you have to market it in the, in the social media to create awareness. Mm. Whereas with the Facebook Live, um, the, the fact that it is live, I mean, the, the whole idea that someone may pick up his phone and mm. go through YouTube and see someone talking and see a discussion there and be able to follow, send questions, feedback, listen to the questions of other uh, people or, or the mm. comments of other people. Uh, it creates a, um, a climate of interactivity. A sense of interactivity, yes. Energy. And yeah. the, uh, immediately you grasp the attention of the audience. Uh, then if somebody shares it, then more people will uh, view it and so forth and so forth. So uh, because I decided to make it live and we had more audience uh, mm -hmm. because of this, uh, gradually one lawyer saw the other and this created a synergy. Uh, a moment. A momentum. My first guest during the lockdown period was uh, Achilles Emilianidis, uh, the well-known yes. colleague and professor. And uh, it was a very interesting discussion. We discussed the constitutional aspects of the lockdown, whether it the was students. Legal, the legal. students. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this created, as you said, a, a momentum. And then it, it was much, uh, it was easier to, to get on with the other uh, guests. And these days, people are calling me up or sending me messages that they want to appear on legal matters. So in two months, because this thing got into the minds of the people, they became accustomed to it, they know what it is. They have seen that it, it, it's a medium to express their ideas, to, their thoughts, to do a discussion, to respond to queries. I get tremendous uh, messages from our colleagues, especially young ones, Philippe, like uh, the millennials, 30, 25 mm -hmm. years old, from students abroad, that they send me private messages. And they say, this is great uh, idea, great work. You give us a lot of 
tools. And I compare this with my time when I came uh, in 1996 and started my cubilage at uh, Christos Kleridis uh, law firm, I knew nothing about the system and I knew no one. I had no picture. I had no idea what is going on. And compare this with the situation of a student, a law student now in Greece or in, uh, in the UK that can see legal matters, can see, can watch the lawyers discussing, commenting, expressing ideas. Uh, so you have um, a better picture, a better understanding of what the law in Cyprus is and what to expect. And I think that you did a very good job with your guests and the choice of some, you know, really rep reputable and uh, mm -hmm. professionals like, you know, presidents of the association yes uh, which not only gives credibility to the podcast but it also uh, allows people to see them in a more in direct context yes context to ask mm -hmm. to ask questions i mean let's face it how often can you ask questions to those who are needs i mean come on mm -hmm. you can just pop online drop a couple of questions get them yes. answered it it gave it showed the the degree of directedness that the internet provides the dynamic, yes. the, dynamic mm. the the lack of it the, the lack of moderation in terms of because live is live it's not mm -hmm. edited it's raw you can mm -hmm. see the reaction of people if there is something that that annoys them you can see mm -hmm. uh, whereas the traditional media and we'll get there Okay. Uh, and, and and what we see online and what we see on the, on the television, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's different because it's edited, it's moderated, it has some other dynamics that we can see. So Absolutely. yes, the, there is a great momentum to legal matters. Uh, you don't need to call it podcast because, but but it is a podcast because a podcast. Mm -hmm. If you take away the term podcast that was coined, I cannot remember when, but it basically it's a conversation. Uh, usually it's, it's in audio form, I mean, but... Uh, the idea, yeah, when it started, it was audio, it was for iPods, when the yes, iPod yes, came yes, out yes, yeah. uh, from Apple, and uh, this uh, form of communication started uh, mm. with uh, uh, audio recorded and circulated in, in digital form, which was very, very popular in the in the states in the uh, after 2000 till 2010 and then youtube came in mm. and um, now the broadcasters the podcasters o o offer this offer their content both in audio form and in um, in visual form as well do you think in, do you think cyprus sorry for interrupting you mm -hmm. and the, the short instances between cities and between work and private houses and uh, are suitable for podca audio podcasts is it something that can pick up uh, that, that, that can take fire here i mean as a user as a consumer of podcast material mm -hmm. because in the us for example or in, in london you wear your ear earpods mm -hmm. you listen to one hour long podcasts in the tube or on the mm -hmm. train or do you think that podcasts are a market that will pick up in Cyprus? Do you have any hunch on this point? Well, I'm biased on this because I, I've been listening to podcasts in audio forms for like more than 10, 15 years now since they first emerged in the, in the United States. So 90% uh, uh, of the content that I listen to is in audio form. Mm. It's on my phone and it's when I'm walking, I'm exercising, uh, when I am in the car and traveling. Uh, and if you noticed, I, I try to communicate this to people that they should uh, download the audio version mm. as well and, and listen to it. I think it will take some time, to be honest, Philippos, and it will not be in the same uh, range, let's say, that we have in the States or in the UK or even Greece, which is uh, a country in close proximity with us. We will always have the limit of our size as regards mm. uh, podcasts that are directed to the uh, to Cypriots. So anything that 
is targeted at the internal market, this will have a limitation. Uh, it, it can go up to a specific uh, level and you, you cannot uh, exceed mm -hmm. that. But if you, if, if you want to go international or European and you find subjects that uh, interest more people, and of course you have to do it in English, Mm -hmm. or in a, in a language that you will be able to communicate with uh, people, uh, with foreigners as well, then that's another story. Of course, I think if you ask me that at some stage, the algorithms and the artificial intelligence will reach such a degree that it will, the, the, the machines will be able to translate in real time what it is said. Mm. So I'm talking to you now in English and uh, uh, a machine will be able to translate that in real time in French in five, in 10 years. So this will break another barrier, which is the barrier of the language. Because our discussion now is in English and may be relevant to French or Germans, but they won't listen to it because uh, it's not their language. Uh, and the same is applicable for podcasts that we do in our language, which is Greek. And uh, even though it may interest, like the podcast we did as regards coaching with mm -hmm. lawyers and law firms, it is a matter that will interest a UK law firm, a, a, a British lawyer. But the content is in Greek, so they will not listen to it. They will not find it on YouTube, on Google and so forth. I think once, that it, it, once this language barrier goes uh, down, and I think it will at some stage, uh, everything will be translatable real time in any language you want. And most importantly, I think that in the next few years, the audio content will be searchable. Yes, that's a point with Alexa and all these uh, mm -hmm. new. Uh, home um, appliances with the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. and a, a huge a huge game is being played there. The mm -hmm. audio, in mm -hmm. the sense that, I mean, if you are at home with a super advanced uh, AI um, technology on audio, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people will be ordering things using voice, right? Mm -hmm. Alexa would like a burger, mm -hmm. okay? And the huge game there will be whose brand will be allocated the keyword burger. Mm -hmm. So yes. th there is a huge game there. So audio, mm -hmm. you are correct that audio, whether in terms of podcast or voice or all these things, it's will be huge in the future mm -hmm. uh, for, consu for consumers and businesses. The, yeah. the SEO, the search engine optimization of the future mm -hmm. will, uh, will, will, will be with voice, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's very, very useful. Uh, the other point I would like to make is... Uh, why should somebody appear let's not get why should somebody lodge a podcast why should somebody appear on a on a podcast why should somebody care to appear on a podcast well let's look, say such obviously, as this one yeah obviously you you must have uh, s someone will appear if he or she has something to say correct if you have nothing to say that will interest other people then there is no reason uh, to appear. So uh, the first uh, uh, the first step is this, <laughs> if you like. Uh, and usually, I mean, from my experience, the people that come on the podcast, they have some things, they have opinions, they have ideas, they feel strongly about something and they need mm. to to uh, say, to express, to voice their concern or, or their opinion. So this is, uh, yeah, this is the number one thing is you need to have something to say that that will be received uh, by other people. What about attention? Is it mm -hmm. a, is attention a, a motivator as to how, why somebody should appear or on a podcast? It's a big chapter there. You mean attention uh, in the sense that somebody else will uh, see him yes, and... Uh, yes. Yeah. yes, it is. So, yeah. You create attention and awareness for your name, for your brand, uh, for your for your law firm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I noticed from uh, my colleagues these days that uh, the 
it's not, I, I don't want to use the wrong word here, but by appearing on the podcast, is like putting themselves on the map as well. This digital map that we are exactly. creating now in Cyprus, you, me, and some other mm. uh, podcasters in different fields. It's like having a presence. It's like having an address, let's say. I'm here as well, and which is good. And th this is what needs to happen eventually. I mean, all people should do this, if you ask me. Uh, it is the new form of communication. Um, uh, we discussed together, I think, in the past that we used to register our law firms in Chrysoso the Oz and the gold pages, what was it, the, of SIDA, yeah. uh, so as to be visible. And in this era, visibility is uh, achieved through uh, digital uh, media and through podcasts, YouTubes, uh, the internet. Which is also connected to why should somebody launch a podcast? Mm -hmm. Because it is cheap, first of all. Mm -hmm. Provided you have you have you have a message. Provided you have a, a mission. You said before. Provided mm -hmm. you have a specific type of content that you would like to co communicate to the world. But mm -hmm. I, but I think that we are all media tycoons today, right? So. Mm -hmm. Uh, either as either as either as uh, guests in podcasts, or as hosts in pod podcasts, or as people who use social media to to create content, and you are a mm -hmm. consistent content uh, publisher, mm -hmm. uh, which is consistent with your online activity. I think the bottom line as to why somebody should consider launching a podcast around anything it is that they do. Maybe they sell mm -hmm. wine, like Gary Vaynerchuk, and they want mm -hmm. to create a podcast around, around different varieties of wine or mm -hmm. grapes or whatever. Whether you're selling bread and you want to talk about agriculture, about Cyprus, about yeah. tradition. Anything, anything about anything. Yeah. So the podcast gives you the opportunity, which is completely free because you pay for the internet, for the 4G, for, mm -hmm. for the broadcast. Mm -hmm. It gives you an opportunity to put yourself out there, as you said, to establish yourself in this new digital era, mm -hmm. to establish yourself as an expert as well, mm -hmm. and to, to take advantage of the fact that if you are invisible, uh, people will simply not do business with you. They will do with those that are visible in the new game. This is true. And uh, I agree with the uh, analysis. Um, and also, I would like to to say my opinion on this because uh, I think that we are mm -hmm. under we are undergoing a revolution. I don't know how many people uh, have realized this, but the traditional uh, uh, media that mm -hmm. we knew uh, is now in the past. Uh, my prediction is that in the next 10 years or so, uh, this um, social media revolution will radically change the way uh, we communicate, the way we advertise, the way we do elections, the way we can affect the public opinion. And, um, you know, the social media, they have very uh, bad things. Uh, but they also give us uh, what you said, this freedom uh, of expression, the freedom to communicate freely to the rest of the world and become uh, each one of us a, a media tycoon without the need to have political connections or uh, pay for sponsorships and all these things. This and is your media company. This is your media company. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, uh, what is happening in, in, in these terms is really amazing. You know, uh, today, I don't know if you follow what is going on in the United States. Uh, Trump yesterday issued an executive order against Twitter because, you know, Trump uh, says a lot of things. He, he makes 50, 60 tweets every day. And most of them uh, are false. They are lies. They are... Like the Chinese virus. The Chinese <laughs> virus. 
misrepresentations of of the truth and so forth. And and Twitter issued a statement uh, warning the public that they should uh, double check the allegations of the president of the United States. Mm. And uh, to counteract this, as a revenge, Trump issued an executive order and initiated the procedure to remove the immunity from the social media. Because in the United States, the social media have immunity against lawsuits for libel and slander, Facebook and uh, Twitter and all the, the rest. And so to in, in an attempt to check to control uh, these platforms, he initiated this procedure and there is this discussion now in the United States. Uh, of course, the matter will go to courts undoubtedly that will decide on the, the legality of this executive order. But we, we have this battle between the executive trying to control uh, essentially the freedom of expression uh, in the media, but also in the, in the social media, but also an attempt to avoid or put some guidelines as to what you can say and what cannot be said in the social media. Especially if you have racism or people like presidents misrepresenting things to the people uh, and to the followers, it is the duty of the platform to warn or put some ground rules so that you know, there is some order. We have freedom, so we have conflicting things here. It's yeah. the freedom of expression, the freedom to say whatever you want. Uh, for example, YouTube during the COVID uh, yes. era, the last banned, uh, banned few those weeks. opinions. They banned yes, opinions, they banned. yeah. And then and videos of some conspiracy theorists. Hmm? Yeah. They banned some conspiracy theorists videos. You see, this thing is is still developing. The social media is is a, is a, something, is a creature of our times. The last decade, it's still in the process. It's not it's not like, for example, the newspapers that have been with us for 200, 300 years, even more. So you know what it is. You know what are the rules. What are the ethics? and so on. So this thing, Philippe, is developing with us and we are part of this development of this uh, revolution. And in this sense, it is very exciting to be actively involved in this uh, process. But I repeat this, uh, in the next 10 years, we're going to see huge changes in many areas of communication. And nobody can predict how this will uh, go in the, into what direction because there are also risks involved as well. Manipulation, Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, elections. It's very easy or it's not difficult to manipulate public opinion, to, to say lies, to drive people to the wrong direction. But uh, we need to see how things will develop. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the social media like Facebook and Instagram and all the other main social media are free. Mm -hmm. It's one of the allegations they make, including Twitter, that they are free because the consumer is the product. So mm -hmm. the fact that we are not paying for subscriptions is that you are, you are the, we are the products so that we mm -hmm. can place before conversations that Facebook chooses to be pertinent to us or so mm -hmm. that we can see products. So by, by all means, social media are not free from manipulation. You are correct. Mm -hmm. Either in terms of what we, what we are attention is drawn to or the collective of personal data as to what mm -hmm. we like, Cambridge Analytica, yeah. showing political preferences, so on. But I think the best example in the US mm -hmm. to show where things are going with the podcasts and generally the power of the of, of, of the internet and the and communications like podcasts is the recent uh, deal, uh, you know, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, yeah. he made a deal incredible. Uh, the guy, he's, he's a, he began from a reality show, X Factor, then he, he was announcing some uh, um, cage fights in uh, UFC, and then, he, and then he developed the biggest, one of the most successful podcasts and, uh, and Spot, Spotify 
went and told him, look, you, you will take your podcast off all platforms, including YouTube. They will delete mm -hmm. everything and it will bring it to us to have exclusive rights mm -hmm. and for 100 million euro. Okay, there are, there are milestones. Of course, it's not like a lump sum payment, but it shows, first of all, okay, he has a tremendous audience, millions for every episode, mm -hmm. uh, but it shows the demand for podcasts as opposed to the mm -hmm. decline in the demand for traditional uh, shows in, on television. Okay, yes. Because people, the attention is not on television anymore. Mm -hmm. Some age groups may still be, some older generations may still be hooked on television stations. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you take into account that this is your television now and your yeah. attention is here, uh, for your audio, your email, is your videos. And because of the 4G going to the 5G era with faster download speeds where mm -hmm. you can see everything on your mobile and on your mm -hmm. uh, tablets, uh, the game is changing forever. And the, and the big screens will simply be extensions of our computers. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the Joe Rogan deal is indicative of what you're saying about what the future holds it's it's part of the revolution what happened with uh with joe rogan and i've been following this guy for the mm. like, last year last few years now and uh, if you watch his uh, shows okay he has very good guests at times but at other times he has average mm -hmm. guys and they talk very casually about day-to-day uh, -day things and I, I don't know, it's his way, he interviews people, it's his character, his personality, his background. He managed to create this uh, huge following, following and huge uh, audience, which now he monetizes by selling himself to Spotify. And uh, it's huge. I mean, I couldn't believe it when, uh, when it came out uh, last uh, week. I think. Last week. I thought the number was crazy and I was watching um, a, a, a presentation in the CNN or BBC about this. And uh, the, it, the estimation is that Spotify will uh, make the money in a couple of years from uh, subscriptions. And, from subscriptions. subscriptions. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the idea, yes, is to penetrate uh, the market uh, mm. through, through subscriptions. Well, it's good for him. Um, uh, and you know, Felipe, he shows, the shows, the Johnny, each episode goes for 90 minutes, two hours, three hours. And it's two people, you know, you, you, you've seen how, he, how it is. And they sit there and they just talk. They put on some slides or some videos, but it's like day-to-day -day talk. Casual. Casual. Talking Confused. about the stuff, wheat, about yes. the new salad in the corner bar, yeah. about the new cocktail. Of from, course, but, I, I think in the US there is a different dynamic because of the population. Uh, it's yeah, 300 it's million population. people. But um, I think, um, Christopher, uh, you, you should also take into account that Joe Rogan mm -hmm. is is somebody well known already so he was he, he was already famous when he began his podcast because mm -hmm. of the his involvement in in martial arts he was announcing uh, he was a reporter for ufc fights mm -hmm. he was really huge on reality shows so yeah. he mm -hmm. he used he had a following he had he a had following a yeah he had a leverage so he leveraged his way into the podcast world this is not a, this is not to say that it can, it cannot be done by somebody who is not famous but mm -hmm. he was very he was very clever in channeling his followers into this new medium mm -hmm. and acquiring this massive wealth this is massive mm -hmm. massive for a podcast yeah it's true i mean there are other examples for example there is a guy that i follow for several years now his name is rich roll Okay. I, I don't know if you ever heard of him. You can I look him up. Mm -hmm. This guy used to be a lawyer. 
uh, <laughs> in, uh, there is a trend there, a trend, California. A trend. California. Yeah, and uh, he was obese, he was uh, drinking, he was um, an intellectual law pro property lawyer. And um, at some stage, he turned to vegan and he became a triathlete. Ah, okay. That's okay, and uh, th th that's the concept, the story mm. and everything. And uh, he, he was nearly bankrupt, he and his wife, and they started doing this podcast 10 years ago. And now they are millionaires, of course, and uh, he has every week the Rich Roll podcast. You can look it up. Mm -hmm. And there, if, if, if you watch Ridge Roll, the content is, is very um, quality content, the discussions. It's another level. It's not like Joe Rogan. I mm -hmm. would say that Joe Rogan is type of populist uh, podcast and content and everything. So I'm giving you this as an example of someone mm. that was completely unknown and it started by telling out his story, how he got out of alcoholism and the obesity and he became a vegetarian initially, then he became vegan and then he went into running, swimming, mm -hmm. cycling and all these things. You know, these people, these things sell. There are markets, you can think of markets. Yes, you know, transformation. The transformation of someone, you know, finding the correct path, regenerating yourself. And there is a story. There is a story that says no, 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 the rela no. it's a relatable, it's a relatable story and a personal exactly. hero, a exactly. personal hero story. Yeah, exactly. It and inspires and mm -hmm. tells people, mm -hmm. you know, you can do it as well, and mm -hmm. you become you become a product as well because you sell your story at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it is possible, you know, to start from uh, scratch. It is doable, especially in the United States. Mm. Uh, in Europe, we are a little bit behind, I think, but we are following with five years uh, difference. Uh, I think in five, ten years, there will be the boom. Mm. You know, of this uh, media in in Greece, in Europe, in Cyprus as well. So it's very interesting that you can also start from scratch, but as you said, and with your story as well, because you haven't started your efforts today, mm -hmm. you, an overnight success is impossible. But if yes. you if if you start, you know, working working that muscle because it's a muscle, doing your shows, preparing. At some point, I mean, you had the COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, alignment of stars and some other uh, interesting uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. But let's go a step before, before the decision to launch. What kind of skills do you need, firstly, to do this thing, to launch, to create interactive and interesting content? Is it something that anyone can do with an internet connection? Yeah, more or less. I mean, if you are going to do audio podcasts and start with that, then you just need an iPhone and you can record uh, your podcasts on the iPhone and then publish it on the internet. This would be the, the most simplistic form of it. Mm. Or even doing a YouTube podcast using the, the iPhone as a camera, which has an excellent camera. Mm. I mean, the iPhone has a better camera than the one I'm using right <laughs> now in terms of quality and I also have an iPhone. Yeah. So, uh, of course, you need to have some drive, if you ask me. I mean, you, you must be inclined mm. towards these things. You, you must have the urgency or the need to communicate with other people, to have a message that you want uh, others to, to listen to, uh, to tell them uh, about solutions to problems mm. or things that you know and you want other people to uh, to educate them as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't say that it's for anyone. It's not. You need to have a drive uh, and some basic skills. And of course, with the YouTube uh, these days, you can learn about 
uh, everything about filming, about the light, about the sound, about editing, publishing, and uh, all these things. And you, you learn so, them as you go along. So you would say, because we had this conversation before, that it's, it's not difficult to do it, mm -hmm. but you need to have a reason to do it. You, have a, you, you need to have something that will uh, motivate you to keep, to keep at it, firstly. Mm -hmm. And secondly, there are a number of technical aspects to putting together mm -hmm. the shows or the, the episodes, mm -hmm. which can be taught by everyone, even themselves so going to YouTube, YouTube and so on. Yeah, I mean, if you go on to YouTube, there are free videos about anything. Can you, you tell? Can you tell? I have my. I have some ideas. Mm -hmm. What are the pieces of this puzzle? What different aspects? Let's say there are to doing what we are doing right now, or what you are doing with the legal matters. Let's well, say I, I, I can drop an idea. Let's say you need. Okay, you need a platform, for example, to do it. Yeah, I mean, in our case, you need a streaming platform. Uh, yeah. to be able to stream to Facebook live. Uh, and uh, there are a number of them, like uh, Be Live or StreamYard that we are using right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and you pay a subscription to have the, uh, uh, the pro edition that allows you to do some things like invite guests, have your own logos and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, you need uh, a good microphone, you need the headphones, you need a good camera. And uh, these days, all cameras are okay. I mean, if you, get, if you, get, if you buy an internet camera like uh, Logitech or a camera that comes with a new laptop, it will have a, a 1080 resolution and it, it mm -hmm. would be great for doing uh, this kind of, uh, of work. And that's it, basically. You need a Facebook account or a YouTube account, and you are ready to go. You need and, to have uh, a graphic designer skills. Uh, not necessarily, because there are many platforms now online that you can uh, join either for free or for, uh, for uh, a small fee. And there are ready-made templates. Mm. Uh, I told you the other day that I'm using Canva.com. And it's a I great know one. I'm using it too. Yeah. Same too. And you can do great uh, graphics in all sizes, mm -hmm. download them, uh, twist them, and so forth. So, but even without graphics, I mean, I was doing my first graphics in Microsoft Word and exporting them. Even PowerPoint. G4. Even PowerPoint. Power. Yeah, yes. you can do great graphics. It's a great graphics in power and, and presentations in mm -hmm. PowerPoint. And um, and just uh, you, you are ready to go. And you mean, mm. or of course, uh, Philippe, there are many media houses now in Cyprus that do like Janos, you know, Janos Tran. Yeah, and of course. On, yeah, yeah. On media and uh, they can do this professionally for you if you if you have money and if you want to pay. I mean, that's an option uh, as well. And I you know that many people do that. To help you set the whole thing up. Or yes, with to the do, oh, branding, to, to, do, the to do the recording, to do the recording, mm, to use they do an excellent equipment. job. Yeah, they do yeah. a great job. I know equipment, and they can even put it online for you, market it for you, and promote it. So that's a great service, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on the money uh, that you want to invest, but if you want to be a podcast producer and you want to control your the productions. Whole thing content then you need to to acquire some uh, skills to do that mm -hmm. uh, in, in my case because i like it i like it to it's something that i enjoy to to do the same things. with me the same with yes. me. I like the, i like the creativity behind the everything creativity aspect of it and, and learning new new skills new some uh, uh, new things you know when i had on the podcast the the president of the Cyprus Bar Association, Doros Ioannidis, he started off by telling me that uh, you have no problem, you, be, you will become a journalist now. <laughs> I saw it, yes. <laughs> so, if, if, if you had to choose, okay, that's a rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you had to choose one over the other, 
So yeah. what, what the podcasting falls within the journalism. Let me yes. make your life difficult now, okay? And you have, you have to choose. You, you stop doing completely the podcasts and you only do law or you do only journalism. What would you choose? No, I would choose law. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Uh, because it's, this it's is your passion. My passion, this is what I do. This is what I like. I mean, I like podcasting and journalism and reporting and everything. But if I had to choose... I mean, there is no question here, I think, for me. And how do you monetize? How, let's say that your idea takes off. First of all, mm -hmm. do you have an intention in the long term to monetize this? How do you see it going? No, no, no. I, I know it's not your motivation. I, I know no, that no, this is not your motivation. My, it's not my motivation and it's not my target. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, of course, if, if this thing takes off, for example, we have the example of Thekla Petridu, the psychologist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She has a, more than 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. She has a podcast too? She, yes, she does every week and okay. she's psychology things. Of course, Thekla, she used to have a, a, a show in Sigma TV several year, years back and she was known from there and also she mm -hmm. appeared in shows in Greece, in Menegagi and other morning shows. And a lot of the following, I suspect, comes from Greece as well because her podcasts are in Greek. So uh, our fellow Greeks follow them. And it is yep. things like uh, psychology, you know, divorce. Uh, and all Catchy, the, uh, the, catchy the, topics. Now with the COVID, the divorce will be... Thetla uh, has like... Every episode, 6,000 uh, views, nine. Wow, and, you mean live? That's tremendous. Yes, That's monetizable. I mean, you can monetize Yes, she, is. she can monetize that and get, I don't know how much money she's, uh, YouTube gives out for these things. Um, in my case, I was approached by a, uh, a practice management okay. platform. Ah, uh, okay. Sponsor the... It makes sense, huh? It makes sense. Yes, but I, I, I turned it down, uh, Philippe. I didn't. I don't want to do this, and I don't want to give the impression to our colleagues and the audience that I did this, you know, for money or for, uh, you know, to get to use the uh, viewers and the views to get uh, some advantage, financial advantage out of it. It's not the intention, and I won't do it. I don't need to do it. I don't, I don't. It's the advantage of it's the advantage of the podcast versus the traditional media to an extent. Uh, it gives you the freedom to be who you are. Okay, there is nothing wrong with monetizing a podcast. For example, I know, you know, Seth Godin, the marketing guru, Seth Godin. He has the Akimbo yeah. wor workshops and the and an incredible podcast, the Akimbo podcast. It's mm -hmm. really, really high quality. What, what he does is he only accepts sponsorships from organizations or people or freelancers that he approves of. Mm. If, okay. he, if, he, if, he feels, if he feels like the, let's say he, for example, there was an app, the, a Calm app on the Apple store that you put it to sleep at night. Yes. You know, whatever. If you, if you like, if he likes the idea and he finds that it aligns with his values, with his with, with his values, he does it, or he promotes his own workshops. So the Akimbo podcast, he can say, you know, if you want to be a freelancer, if you want to become a great bootstrapper or whatever, you can go to my workshop. So he uses his own podcast to promote his own services. Okay, with the legal thing. There are some limitations there because of the uh, ethics as well. So, uh, but I know that you don't do it for the monetization, and you are correct that the, it could potentially erode the credibility of your voice. Yes, maybe somewhat. not, but maybe yeah. yes. Especially if the company or if the if the law firm management software is also, you know, uh, a satellite of some law firms or, or, or law firm. You know, there it can even be more evident that you could be indirectly influenced by some agendas. 
which is mm -hmm. something that you don't want. Uh, okay, yeah. so other than that, um, the monetization aspect, mm -hmm. uh, how would you say that uh, you are podcast? And let me let me extend it so that you can we can wrap up our discussion. Has your podcast and your online activity, which is really rich and very consistent, helped you generate a business? I mean, do you see any fruits to your labor? Any any business. tangible? Hmm? No business, no. Uh, but it has given me a lot of uh, personal satisfaction mm. and. I Acquired a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. by listening to the ideas and the views of uh, of my guests. You become which, a better professional. You become a better yes, professional. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And uh, I mean, this for me has no value because if you think about it, if you become more knowledgeable in your field, you improve your customer service. Right. Yes, you, you improve your product as well the product you 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 learn about new things or you give attention to things that you didn't before and you can you think of an were... example of something yes. that you le learned that was really valuable for you in your practice the discussion about the closure of the courts and the alternative mm. dispute solution uh, avenues uh, led to a discussion with uh, about arbitration and I had a podcast with Stavros Pavlou Mm. Uh, a couple of weeks ago from Patricios Pablo in Limassol. Uh, I'm planning to do uh, another podcast with Janos Georgiadis, who is also an arbitrator, and Andrew Dimitriou, yeah. uh, who is also a very esteemed colleague and does arbitration. Uh, and also I spoke with Sodiris Pita several times, uh, again from Limassol, about these things. And when I, I looked into the matter, uh, of arbitration, it is something that I will um, engage myself professionally with. Mm. I mean, I will be actively pursuing this avenue uh, because of the situation of the courts and the problems and the delays and the mess that we are in the justice system. I think arbitration is a, is a credible alternative solution for lawyers. And look, what I'm trying to do here is not gain personal mm -hmm. knowledge without you know, keeping it to myself. I think it is something that our colleagues should learn about and be interested about arbitration, uh, be educated and start to practice it. We should look to alternative dispute resolution uh, forms. And this is something that I didn't give attention to the last years or so. It wasn't in my radar. And now it is, and uh, I'm telling you, this is one of the lessons uh, yeah. of the of the positive things that I took over from uh, the podcast during this period. So uh, an amazing benefit of being a podcast host then mm -hmm. is that you had to get yourself and yes. you become richer, richer not in terms of money, with every guest that you invite, which makes you even more... Uh, a more interesting and complete person. Yeah. And my or, final question, yep. Yeah, uh, another thing that I wish to mention is the, uh, from the legal perspective, the discussions, the podcasts I had with the uh, academics, mm -hmm. like Achilles Emilianidis, like Kostas Paraskeva, who's a professor at the University of Cyprus, human rights professor, uh, Christos Kiliridis, about constitutional law, mm -hmm. about human rights. Uh, they give very invaluable insight into, into all these things, constitutionalism, uh, how we interpret the constitution, the human rights, the limits of human rights, how much you can restrict the basic human right and so on. And uh, I had podcasts, especially, uh, for example, I remember the one with Paraskeva. It's like being a, a human rights lecture. I mean, any lawyer that will watch that in the future, it's like being in a human uh, rights law lecture. So and it, it you also understand? shows that it also shows that uh, I'm circling around what you what you have said that to be able to moderate 
discussions with lawyers, you have to have knowledge. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Uh, especially about technical, okay, even a lay person can understand more or less where this is going, but a podcast, ho a podcast host mm -hmm. sh should not seek to delve into areas which are completely out of his depth. I think in your case, because you are an experienced lawyer, uh, you are able, first of all, to gain the, the respect of your guests to open up. And secondly, you are able to navigate through uh, technically demanding conversations, the constitutional things and all these things. And you are, you are well prepared. I can see that you study before your podcasts, uh, which is another thing that you have to be prepared. This is the reason that I will not become a journalist because <laughs> when people are telling me you are doing very good interviews and, and so on, but it's because it's my subject. I mean, if I was interviewing someone that is a... Rocket scientist. I wouldn't be so good and I, I, I probably wouldn't watch. <laughs> it's very close to your heart, so it goes... It's something that you know. With something, I mean, it's, it's my profession. You know things, you know how things go, you know the whereabouts. So it's very easy to direct the discussion. You know what is important, what is not important. Most of the podcasts are technical. They are not for the average listener. Mm -hmm. The audience, the pri primary audience are lawyers. So, so and uh, let, me, let me wrap this discussion, this really interesting discussion up with a question because you mentioned something about sharing knowledge. How do your colleagues in the office mm -hmm. view your project? What feedback do you get from them? Do you get any feedback from them? I get. Mm -hmm. Initially, uh, you know, you know where this is coming from. Maybe no. if, if not, I will tell you because I know, you know, one of one of my subjects is motivation. It's about mm -hmm. what to do so that your people will feel that you know we are proud to be in a firm because the firm has a mission because the firm. It's not only a profit maximizer, but it provides value to the community in which it operates, right? Mm -hmm. So with your initiatives, with your, because it's clear that you don't do it to monetize, okay? Mm -hmm. So yes. what, I, what I'm coming at to wrap this up is to see whether you have sensed that your colleagues and your team members are also satisfied that this project is associated to your firm through yourself, of course. Have you gained this? Yes, yes that's true. Even though the, the initial uh, reaction here was... Um, too much time. Uh, not too much time. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, not nervousness, but feeling uh, uneasy, feeling uneasy. Yeah because it was something new and um, I got this sense also from my wife for example or from my w son watching this. watching you live or in the yeah, office in the environment no, no, no. The, live the, okay uh, or from my brother for example that he was saying what is he doing now is he becoming a TV <laughs> show star <laughs> so but when uh, after a couple of episodes uh, and when people enter at the office and uh, my immediate environment like my friends lawyer friends and uh, so on uh, they realize what what this is and what the idea and you get over the initial shock let's say um i i get criticism i get um uh, recommendations on uh, how I went, uh, the question or the guest was good, was not good. Uh, and this is very satisfying uh, because uh, uh, you get the sense that people, they, they are interested because mm. if they provide feedback, it means that they took some time to watch it and uh, they are interested in this. And to be honest, um, um, I changed some things 
on the way because of these uh, criticism or recommendations uh, I got. Uh, what is the best? What is the best compliment you you remember getting because of this project? Which make which make you feel like okay, that's I'm on the right uh, path. I get uh, Philip, as I told you before, many uh, feedback uh, from uh, from uh, viewers, from audience, from lawyers that I don't know. Many people have sent me private messages, and they tell me that. Uh, you don't know me. My name is uh, so and so, and I would like to congratulate you. Thank you. Keep it up. You, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, a colleague of ours called me two, three weeks ago, and uh, he told me, "Look, please continue what you are doing because I share a lot of your ideas." And so many years I wasn't talking, but now that uh, you you did this podcast i want to talk as well i want to express myself and uh, express my views and this once you show once you see that you know people are um, they benefit from this i mean the, this is all the, the greatest reward i think and can you can you also share something uh, not so positive like ah you're you're putting yourself on this oh, before, before a screen and you... No, I didn't you get this type of... Any negative uh, type of... This type of uh, totally negative or toxic mm -hmm. uh, uh, comment, to be honest. Unless, unless some people say, Not say it and I, I don't know about it. But uh, to my knowledge, uh, I didn't get this. Okay. Even, you know, I, I get... Uh, very well-known lawyers contacted me, you know, big names by messages. And uh, they they told me it's very good, good idea. And we are at your disposal to, to say our views. They send me presentations of things they do or uh, webinars and all these things, which, which is good. And I want to do that. I want to promote that. Even though, you know, it's, it's a very delicate thing sometimes because there are mm -hmm. competition issues involved. I'm a lawyer as well. I have a law firm. I'm, I'm out looking for clients and I am at the same time promoting the knowledge and the expertise of some of my competitors. So I need to be careful how to... You don't want people to misunderstand this and... You don't want your guests to feel uh, awkward or that you are using them for anything. At the same time, you don't want to put yourself uh, in a disadvantage as a professional. Uh, for example, uh, one of my closest friends in a podcast that I had, I won't say with who, but when it finished, he called me and he said, look, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, why? Because you looked like a student. And uh, it wasn't good for your image because it was as if you were listening, asking some questions and uh, like you were the second violin and you are a lawyer, you are a professional. And I, I tried to explain to him that I don't see it this way. Mm -hmm. This is not the idea. It's not who is going to be the maestro. <laughs> The idea is to create a productive discussion and do valuable content and communicate that to, to the listeners. And of course, try to expose the advantages and the virtues of your guest. The, the idea of the uh, is what we said before that, that the idea of the facilitator mm -hmm. uh, is that it has to be somebody who is perhaps more knowledgeable or equally knowledgeable with the guests so as mm -hmm. to be able to navigate through the intricacies of the subjects being discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, you are correct. No, no, the, the person who provided this criticism to you has a point, I think, only in the sense that, okay, you are giving exposure to competitors. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is part of being a host yeah. of a niche yeah. podcast, of a niche podcast with a niche audience. 
uh, inevitably you will invite you, you will invite peers all right now some may shine others may not shine that well but at the end of the day if you look at it you are you are always getting exposure as well so it's uh, it's it's the name of the game and you were brave enough to to launch this that's why i called the episode daring to launch this one because yeah. You know, it takes guts to do it, and I give it to you. I pass my hands to you because there is a risk. There are risks involved. Yes. Uh, but I think you are doing a tremendous job. Thank you. Thank you uh, and it and, and it took a great momentum, especially since last year when we met. Um, on my end, I think I've covered all the points I wanted to expand. If you would like to have some uh, uh, concluding remarks, that would be great. Well, on the yeah. topics we touched. First of all, let me thank you for the invitation. I really enjoyed it. And uh, even though it was in English, I think people will understand what we were talking about <laughs> with our Cypriot accent uh, and so forth. Um, look, it's a journey, Philippe. Uh, like everything we do in life, um, we try to enjoy it as we go along. We will do mistakes. Mm. Uh, uh, my my idea and what I want in every aspect of, of my life, and I say this to my son and my children, is to leave something behind. Whether that will be a book or a podcast or a judgment of the court that you took part in mm -hmm. and your name is referred to, uh, try to be positive. From the feedback that I am seeing regarding the Legal Matters project and the work, especially from lawyers who are uh, attending your events, everyone is feeling really thankful, I think, because you took the initiative, you took the snake out of the out of the pit, the castan yeah. yeah. out And I think this shows thought leadership in my in my in my book, uh, literally metaphorically. This shows thought leadership. Uh, let me end by saying I wish you to continue being a leader in what you do at all. I mean, taking into account positive and negative comments, they will always help you be better. Thank you for being my first guest. It's uh, my honor, my friend. Thank you so much. We come full circle. You know, I was your yes. guest. Now I, you are my guest. And, and uh, the next step is to co-host the podcast. We together. can do it. Yes. You, you, Let's you, organize you. it. Let's think of something and uh, and let's do that. Let let that be the next project. We should. Thank you to Mar our Marvel Matters. Marvel Matters. <laughs> Marvel Matters. It's a it's a hybrid. A hybrid. <laughs> Thank you to our uh, viewers as well. And have a fantastic weekend. And take care, everyone. Philippe, you too. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.